So today we're going to take a look at form during. I'm going to let you guys know what it is, why we do it, and show you some of my favorite resources. So in a few Facebook groups where the topic of form drawing has come up recently and there's always a whole bunch of moms going, what on earth is that? What is it? So I've looked at a lot of resources for form drawing over the years and this is hands down my absolute favorite. It is so informative, so thorough, and the book is just absolutely beautiful. It's actually two books. The first one does grades one through three and the second one does grades four and five. You don't need a form drawing book after that because at the end of grade five, children transition from form drawing to uh, freehand geometric drawing. So, so these books are on beautiful, thick, glossy paper. They have so much information included in them. It's going to go through all the lessons that you'll need to complete for classes one, two, and three. Plus it gives an explanation of form drawing, the reasons behind why we do it, how to present a lesson, what you need to do to prepare beforehand, what you need to look for in your child while you're presenting the lesson. It's also got a handy little section here where it talks specifically specifically about using form drawing in the homeschool, which is really useful. And that's part of this teaching method section where it goes through what you need to do step by step in the lesson. So for each grade, your first page is going to let you know why we are doing these particular lessons. What are your children going to be getting out of them? And what kinds of things are they going to be learning? You know, we're looking at this being a way for them to develop their coordination and their dexterity and their observation skills, a way for them to begin comparing and contrasting, to gain that spatial awareness that we're hoping for. But they're also learning things like proportion, relation, contrast, movement and sequence. And that's included at the start of each grade level. So you know what the point is every single time. It's not just something that is thrown into the curriculum willy-nilly. Like there is a purpose behind it. So your first lesson is probably the most thoroughly explained lesson. It's going to talk you through or walk you through step by step what the forms are, how to create them, what you should be doing with your child before they've even put pen to paper. It also talks about things like the vocabulary that you can be using with your children. This is going to lead into their art learning and their mathematical learning. Plus it's building those literacy skills. There's more examples on how to integrate movement into the lesson. By the time we've come to grade three, we're working on a completely different set of skills than we were in first grade. So now we're working on handwriting skills, perception of relationships, point of view, problem solving. We're dealing with static and dynamic movement. We're dealing with transformation. So these tie into the things that the children are learning in mathematics in the same year as well. So at the end of each grade area, it gives you some tips on evaluating the child's work, what you should be looking for. And then it's got some great quotes from Rudolf Steiner that relate to form drawing and some further reading if you're interested as well. The next one is grades four and five. So to start off with, the book is very similar. It gives you your contents, the introduction, and how to use the book are the same, it's only the diagramming that's different. The teaching methods are the same up until this point here where it's going to explain to you in more detail what the particular methods are for grades four and five. It also 
helps to create that link with the work that you've been doing in these grades. For instance, a lot of the forms that you'll be doing in class four or grade four relate to Norse mythology and Celtic mythology, which are major themes for that year. Like what skills is the child working on and what knowledge are they gaining? Again, what is the child experiencing? Questions that you can be asking, asking of the child to get them thinking. And it just becomes more and more complex as you go along. Some of these are surprisingly difficult to do. But it's tying in our work from past cultures in grade five, where we're learning uh, primarily about Greece, also China, Egypt and India are sometimes brought in in that year. And then it helps us make that transition from form drawing into freehand geometry because that is where form drawing is going at the end of grade five when form drawing as a class on its own finishes, geometry will take over. So I've looked at quite a few books over the years. These two are definitely my favorite. I would thoroughly recommend them as the only form drawing resource that you're really going to need in a home school. So form drawing is meant to be a holistic element in your home school. It's a way of bringing the child into their mind and their body a little bit more. It starts off really, really simply. Traditionally, it is the first class or the first, um, the first block brought to children in first grade in a Waldorf school. And the idea is that it is helping them to learn to concentrate. It's helping them to learn to be deliberate in their actions. It's helping them learn to use the materials that they'll be using, the paper and the crayons. It's helping them to focus, to concentrate. It's helping them to integrate left and right hemispheres. It's helping them to coordinate themselves. Form drawing is a way of bringing together children's minds and bodies so that they're working as a unified whole. And if nothing else, Waldorf is about holisms. Your lessons, and it goes through this in the books that I've chosen, should incorporate movement. And that should start off in a very particular way. Firstly, your child should watch you creating the forms large, on a blackboard. If you don't have a blackboard, you could use a whiteboard. You could use a large piece of paper. But the point is that the child should watch you create the form. They should then create the form themselves, but using their whole body. So get up. You could go outside and walk the forms. You could trace the forms on the floor. You can walk them forwards. You can walk them backwards. You can shuffle along sideways. After they've created the forms with their whole body, you start to build those forms with smaller elements of the body. So you could be drawing the forms in the air with your hand. You could be drawing them on each other's backs. That one is always fun and sure to get giggles out of your kids. Um, and I like this one, particularly if they're a little resistant to form drawing. After you've done those big movements and then you've brought them down to the arm movements, bring them down smaller again. Draw the forms with your head. Well, then with just your notes. And that's fun. And again, it's helping them concentrate. It's helping them work on those motor skills and their coordination and the integration, which is the point. Afterwards, and only after you've done all of those things, do you get your child to do it on the paper. You can have them do it on a blackboard. You could have them doing it in paint. You could have them tracing over one you've done on a blackboard and erasing it with a wet brush. There are lots of different ways that you can practice the actual drawing of the forms. But the key is to make sure that the child has first observed you, has produced the forms using large movements and then small movements, and then they produce it on paper to go into their main lesson book or however you are collecting their work samples. So I hope you're not more confused than you were before I started. Um, just remember those few key points that it's about creating a balanced whole that you need to work through from observation, large movement, small movement, and then the drawing. It should be fun. Tie it into stories where you can, but don't overcomplicate it. 
definitely don't go for this one before first grade and remember that it is going to transition into geometric drawing at the end of fifth grade. There is a point to it. Don't skip it. It is so much fun and very worthwhile. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Check me out over on Instagram because I have a lot of information over there that I share with you about how to create a Waldorf inspired homeschool. And I will see you guys on Thursday.